Today's video is brought to you by Assiniboy Downs Gaming and Event Center. And be sure to tune in to Trust the Profits Live Mondays at 8 p.m. Eastern for Monday Night Lights, hosted by Matthew DeSantis. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Pick 5 Player Show. I'm your host, Michael Peller, and a.k.a. Horse Guy Mike. Today, we're going to be talking about the late Pick 5 this Saturday at Belmont Park. They've got a big day. They've got the Belmont Oaks Grade 1 and the Grade 1 Belmont Derby along with the victory ride and the Suburban earlier in the card. So really excited to be going through the graded stakes action we've got here at Belmont. Um, we're going to talk about the pick five starting at race number eight. Um, so with that being said, we're going to dive right in um, and go through each leg of this race and talk about how we're going to be playing this. Once again, we're going to try to keep this uh, ticket under $50, a um, little bit of value here with some singles and some skinny plays. Um, so let's dive right in. So looking at uh, leg number one, race number eight, the grade one Belmont Oaks going a mile and a quarter on the turf, um, field of nine entered. Um, you can see here the number one horse is going to be my top pick here. That's Mission of Joy. Um, Mission of Joy had a great race at Churchill and the Regret, um, going a mile and an eighth, um, 91 version that speed figure, won by a length and a half. Um, Gaffleon aboard was a really great ride that day. Um, two races back in the Edgewood in the grade two on, on Churchill Downs on, on the Derby Oaks, Oaks weekend. Um, kind of flattened out, got third, uh, but was making up a ton of ground in the stretch. I think the extra um, stretch out and distance has really helped Mission of Joy. Um, so I think she's going to absolutely love this mile and a quarter. Um, Grand Motion, Tyler Gaffleon. We know Gaff on turf in these route races is incredible. So Mission of Joy is going to be my top pick here. Um, the number two, Strikingly Spun. Um, this was the one I was kind of hesitant to lead, leave off. Um, ended up as my last toss. If anything else happens in the card, this is one I'm going to add. Last time out, second in a really good allowance race, lost by a neck. Um, still had a 92 Brisnet speed figure, which is actually higher than what Mission of Joy got last out. Um, Jose Ortiz, trained by Joe Sharp. Um, good option here. I just think this horse has no graded stakes experience. This will be the toughest field this horse has faced. So leaving off um, has the ability. Wouldn't be surprised if something happens. Um, she's a great closer, but I think Mr. Joy is going to be a little bit more mid pack, um, in a really great spot to, to, uh, strike. And so looking at, you know, like mid packs, the closers, she, she wasn't able to kind of break through that ceiling that I've got here. So definitely going to be going with number one, Mr. Joy, leaving strikingly spun out the next one. I don't know how to pronounce the Spearling Biag, um, Graham motion, John Velasquez. This is one of the Euro horses coming over from France last out. Um, raced over in Ireland as well. You know, a lot of potential. And we've seen these horses coming from, from Europe entering this this New York turf series, both in the Phillies and, and the, uh, the the males versions. And they've had great performances. You know, Chuck Appleby's had a lot of success here. Um, but this one, you know, you got to take a stand somewhere. And I think I'm going to leave all the Euros off, off in this card today. Um, I'm just looking for experience winning here in America with experience. Um, this horse is coming off of a fifth place finish in a, in a group three in France. Really great performance there, but hasn't raced since April. So you look at the layoff, you look at that last performance, you look at the travel, um, not a horse that I'll be wanting to play here. And I think especially these euros are going to attract a lot of money. So potentially a short price here. The number four, Pepe Leo, um, Javier Castellano, Mark Cassie. This is the horse that got second to Mission of Joy last out. Um, and since we're trying to keep this a little bit more budget friendly, I'm going to go with Mission of Joy on top here. If you really liked that race and Papa Leo is one that you want, um, you can include that and say, like, maybe maybe um, she'll be able to turn the tide this time. Um, but if I think Mission of Joy is good, I don't think Papa Leo is going to be able to flip the script, so to say, this time out. Um, so for me, she's a toss. And the number five horse prerequisite. This is my next include here. Um, and I'm really interested about this horse. Um, Chad Brown, Irad Ortiz. The interesting thing about this horse and the other one that I'll, I'll be including, number seven, is Spray. Um, Flavian Pratt rode this horse the last two rides out and, and won both those races. Last out in the Wonder again at Belmont. Um, got a 94 Brisnet speed figure. Um, be, be Your Best, who's also in this race, went a mile and eighth. So that was a really great race. But for some reason, Flavian Pratt's not riding this horse. Irad's riding. So that makes you wonder, like, did Flavian choose to ride the number seven at Spray instead and did Chad have to go to Irad to pick up the mount here? So that tells me a lot about how Flavian Pratt feels about a spray, how confident Chad is about a spray. 
um, and how everyone feels about this horse. Because just looking at the past performances and the way this horse ran last out, you would think this would be an easy, you know, favorite for this race. But what's going on there behind the scenes? So don't want to dig too much into, you know, the politics and things behind the scenes with the jockeys and, and assignments there. Maybe I ride just fits the, the profile of this horse a little bit better than Flavian does. But I'm going to go ahead and add both of them there because I don't know which one's going to end up being the Chad that's going to win this race. So I think prerequisite, and again, a spray, these are the two Chad Browns you're going to want to include. Um, a spray is coming off a long layoff, uh, or not uh, not a long layoff, but a mild layoff. Ran at Pimlico. This will be the, the toughest field it's faced. Has never faced the Graded Stakes Company. Um, one it's made in, one an allowance, and then one a listed stakes at, at Pimlico. So diving deep into a grade one is a lot to ask for, but it's been impressive in, in its last two races. So feeling confident there. And again, kind of playing the angle of, of what's Chad's thought process here. Why is Flavian choosing this, this horse instead of prerequisite, who I think would be an easy choice there. So those are my last two I'm going to include. I mentioned Be Your Best, who lost the prerequisite last out. Kind of the same as strikingly spun. I don't think there's anything here with the stretch and distance that makes me think that they're going to flip the script um, from a pace perspective. We've got a lot of horses here who are looking to be mid-pack. Um, prerequisite's going to be one of those ones on the lead. Last race, it went gate to wire. Was able to hold off, um, be your best. And if a horse is going to be running later, I think Mission of Joy is going to be the one. So prerequisite, I think, is your likely winner going gate to wire. Mission of Joy is your likely winner coming from off the pace. And a spray is kind of your wild card in here where you don't really know what you're going to be getting. So those are the three I'm going to be including. Uh, Freitas the Red, some interest there, but again, coming off, had a really impressive maiden breaking race last out in 120K maiden, but going from a maiden to a grade one is not an angle I want to take. And then the last horse, Aspen Grove, another Euro coming over from Ireland who was racing in the, the top tier over there in group ones, group threes in Ireland. But race last in, in at the end of May, got 10th, finished pretty far back. Um, you have to wonder why uh, they're coming over here instead of racing over there. Instead, maybe they feel like this is a, an easier field. So I'm not, n none of these Euros in this race really stand out to me. So I do think they'll attract some money, but I'm going to be going with the, the two Chads and Mission of Joy um, to close out this first leg here. Next leg, race number nine. This is an allowance race going seven furlongs on the turf. Um, 13 horses. So a lot a lot going on here. Um, so this race in the last leg, you'll see there's a lot of horses entered. So these are the ones we're going to spread a little bit. And again, we try to keep our tickets a little bit cheaper. So spread, you know, we, we four or five horses here. Um, there's some horses here to like. The number one, Dark Vector, um, I, I like a lot. So this horse was in the maiden a number of times. Had an incredible 10 length maiden victory back at Belmont in May. Decided to run back into Woody Stevens, maybe try dirt, see what happened there. It was a complete no show. Draw a line through that. So let's say this horse never ran the Woody Stevens and you see a 10 length maiden breaking victory at Belmont on this surface and coming back here. That's impressive. So if we just say get rid of its dirt performance, this horse is in prime form, ready to, to take that big step forward here. So like Dark Vector a lot for George Weaver. Number two, Elusive Edge. Uh, you know, it, it, nothing really exciting about this horse. Middling speed figures, middling performances, kind of in this allowance class. Um, nothing to get excited about. And so when we're looking at a field this deep, um, I'm one of horse that, I can, that has something to, to make me excited about. If I was to go with all on this horse one, I wouldn't be surprised. But I want a horse that's going to give me an edge somewhere. And Elusive Edge is not the one to give me the elusive edge I'm looking for. The number three horse, Carpe's Dream. Uh, again, similar to the last one, you know, has been in allowance company for a long time. Really looking for that win. Has not won since it's maiden back in December. Um, I don't think there's anything that, that shows that this is going to be the race for it to win. Number four, Dracon or Draken. Um, similar, similar story. Was running in claiming races, actually. Um, Finally won a claiming race, moved up into allowance company, has not been able to replicate that. Um, two out back at Houston, but did win at Belmont in the seven for a long sprint. So the speed figure for that race did come back pretty strong for an 85 Brisnet. There's potential here. Jose Lascano, Robertino Diodoro. Wouldn't be surprised, but again, not one that shows me there's anything to get excited about here. Number five, what say the 
Um, this was a, a kind of a tough one for me. Again, a horse that doesn't like to win, hasn't won since its maiden in November. Um, middling performances, middling speed figures, kind of performance all over the place. Wants to be close to the lead. If it's not close to the lead, it's a complete no-show. So if you can break fast, there's a chance, um, but not going to be including here on this ticket. The number six horse, Clubhouse. This is the second one that I want to be including here. Uh, Todd Pletcher, I rat Ortiz. Last race in the Gotham. Again, we talked about that with Dark Vector, where if you take a turf horse, run it on dirt, just completely draw a line through that performance here. So win a mile on the dirt, did not like it back in March. Um, before that, ran on the dirt, did good. Ran on that, before that was running on turf, did great. Uh, had a six and a half length victory, 86 prison at speed figure on the turf. So this is a horse that's getting back to what it was doing well before they tried to you know, throw it onto the derby trail. Um, and I love that. I love seeing horses kind of take a break, take a step back. What were we actually good at? And turf sprinting seems to be what they, what this horse wants. So getting Irad, getting back to the, the performance that it wants, I think this is a really good option here. Next up, number seven, Sousa Summer. Um, likely as winner, I would say, has been, has been doing really well in allowance company. Um, finished second last out, third before that, fourth before that, second before that. Um, mid to high 80s Brisnet speed figures has tactical speed. You can sit right off the pace. So I think if there is kind of a moderate pace here, which there could be with this many horses, um, Sousa Summer will be in a perfect position and has the experience in the class of this field. It's just not one to like, yeah, like Clubhouse. Like I'm excited for Clubhouse because of a, a turf sprinter who's getting back to what they were good at. Sousa Summer is just kind of like doing what they're already good at. They're in their form likely to win, but not one to get excited about. So I'm including both of them. I think they're they're likely to win along with the number one dark vector. Um, the next one's out of praise, hasn't run since September at Woodbine. And I know it's Chad Brown and Flavian Pratt and Claire Rich Stables, but there's no way I'm taking a horse off a 100-day layoff in their first appearance. So a praise is going to be a fade for me. The number nine, famous gent, um, just hasn't had a good performance in a long time. And the speed figures have are kind of okay. Not one that I'm looking at it, but again, Tyler Gaffleone on this horse, Tyler on turf, especially turf sprints. Um, he's one of the best in the game. Uh, statistics show that. But this one uh, is one that I'm going to be fading. I'm going to be hammering Tyler in the first race with Mission to Joy, but fading him here. Number 10, Air Show. Uh, going to be another toss for me. Was ra racing and claiming races. Finally won an allowance last out, but that was all the way back in April. Not going to take the layoff here. Not going to take the kind of class jump or class elevation off of some of their previous performances. So Airshow is going to be a fade. Uh, last one I'm going to be including is the in Inflation Nation with Dylan Davis uh, for Christoph Clement. Um, ran the listed stakes last out. So actually a class drop here going from 100K listed stakes down to an allowance. Um, seven furlongs yielding turf that day. Got second by a head, 94 brisen at speed figure, which is well above what the rest of this field is performing. So getting a little bit of class relief, better speed figures, already shown that it can perform well in turf sprints. Um, I think this is a really likely winner. Going to be coming from way off the pace. So if he can get a good pace set up from some of these front runners, um, Inflation Nation, I think, is going to have a big shot to win here. The last two, Aruba and Soulmate. Soulmate's also eligible. 12th Man's also eligible as well, who I didn't include here. Um, similar to what we're talking about, um, Aruba took forever to break his maiden, finally moved into an allowance and got beat by 15 lengths, 12th, 12th place. Um, so the last two, just not even going to talk about, we're going to be including Dark Vector, Clubhouse, Sousa Summer, and Inflation Nation. we got a couple who are switching back to turf sprints after moving somewhere else. And then we've got a couple who are in prime form looking to move forward. All right, so moving on to leg three, race number 10, the grade one Belmont Derby going a mile and a quarter on the turf for three-year-old males. Um, going pretty skinny here. And again, this is a race where we've got a lot of, you know, these American horses who maybe tried the, the Derby trail and they're getting back to turf. Um, you've got these ones who've been doing turf all year. You've got some Euros coming over. So a lot of different angles to play here. Um, but I'm going to be looking at turf success here in America with my two top picks. Um, so I'll go through the field really quick. Number one, Mendelssohn's March. One of those ones who tried, uh, tried the Derby trail was in the bluegrass realized that that wasn't what it wanted to do, came back in the American turf, came back in the Autobahn, 
loss to my top pick here, which is Web Slinger. Both those races, um, you'll get a big price if you want it, but lost to Web Slinger twice in a row. Not going to be one that I'm going to choose to to try to flip the script this time. Number two, Bapio um, has been racing on turf his entire career, um, so always love to see that a horse does what it knows. Um, but is showing up in all these these races, but never really taking that next step until the last race out where it won the, the Jersey Derby uh, at Monmouth. Um, won it by a length, 94 Brisnet speed figure, beat Talk of the Nation, who I love. Um, so there's a really good shot that this horse could t- be taking that next step forward. Um, but I'm deciding to go skinny here, going with the two likeliest winners. Um, Bapio would be my third choice here. If I was to add a third horse or if Web Slinger or Kalik was, was likely to fade or, or scratch, Bapio would be my next one just because, you know, Mark Cassie, Luis Saez, you're getting a good combo there um, in the turf routes. So it, it pains me to leave them off. But again, we're trying to keep this tickets a little bit skinny. Um, last one off, it just hasn't gone the distance. I think that's the biggest thing here. You know, it won at a mile, but going from a mile to a mile and a quarter is a big step up especially facing graded stakes winners now. Um, so it's going to be a little bit too much for me here. So leaving off Bapio. The number three horse, Cyber Ninja, um, kind of impressive. You know, last out won by a, a length and a half, but it's a, going from a maiden to a grade one. We talked about that when we talked about the Belmont Oaks. I'm not going to be taking a horse that's coming from a maiden, even an allowance up to a grade one. So going to be one that I'm going to leave off for, for now. Next up is Web Slinger. It's going to be my top pick here. Uh, won the Autobahn last out, won the American Turf, got third in the Transylvania, second in the Colonel Liam. This is a horse that's been showing up in turf turf routes all year long, has the experience at different tracks, Gulfstream, Keeneland, Churchill. So bringing it to Belmont, seeing how he'll take to the Belmont Turf. Um, I, I think he's got a, a great shot here if you were looking at that American Turf performance where he had a 96 Brisnet, he beat some of the best horses, You'll see in this field, one by a nose, re- replicated that in the Autobahn. Speed figure for the Autobahn didn't come back as quick, but was facing lesser company, wasn't really pressured, one one easily by a mile or by a length and a quarter. So we'll we'll see how he does this time. I think he's gonna he's setting up to be the best three-year-old turf router. Um, and we're excited to see how he does. And that kind of brings us to the next horse right underneath him, the number five, Far Bridge, who he beat by a nose in that American turf. Um, Farbridge came back and got second again to my other top choice here, Kalik. Um, so maybe Farbridge is able to flip the script. This is a horse where they're losing closer. They're not getting beat badly. They're always in the race. They're in that Penine Ridge. They're in that American turf. I just don't see see him loving the extra distance, and that's what's that's what's going to take to beat Webslinger and Kalik. So Farbridge was when I was going to leave off. Um, but again, just like Bapio, if I was to kind of spread a little bit further here, maybe go skinny and other legs. Bapio and Farbridge would be the ones I would include as likely winners. Um, but for me, I'm going to go with the winner of the Penine Bridge and the winner of the American Turf. That's Web Slinger, the number four, the number eight, Kalik. The number six is also interesting, Silver Knot. Um, a Euro horse, Charles Appleby, um, has run a ton in Europe, ha- was facing really stiff competition in there, came over on the Belmont undercard, or sorry, on one of the, the races at Belmont, didn't really show up in the Penine Ridge, got third, beaten by Farbridge, beaten by Kalik. So maybe it needed that one race in America to kind of get used to the surface over here, get used to the the um, the travel. Maybe this is the opportunity there. But as I said earlier, I think the Euros are going to take a lot of money. Silvernaut's going to take a lot of money. And I I don't want to put my, my faith here um, when I've got two proven graded stakes winners here. So Silvernaut's going to be a fate for me. Wizard of Westwood, this is the one that I like as a potential gate-to-wire winner. If you see a lot of these other ones who are kind of mid-pack or, or late ones not, uh, not coming home. So potential gate-to-wire here, but I think Kalik is a better gate-to-wire um, option here. And so Kalik won its last race in the Penine Ridge going gate-to-wire. Wizard of Westwood won its last race going gate-to-wire, but Kalik is better at it. So when I'm going super skinny, I want a gate-to-wire um, option and I want a mid pack or a closer option. So that's what I've got here. Web Slinger is going to be my mid pack closer. Kalik's going to be my, my front runner. So I think I'll like him covered in both of those scenarios. But we'll move on. We've talked about the Kalik. We'll move on to number nine, Mundango. Um, once again, 
when it's made in, went in a, to an allowance, now moving up to a grade one, would like to have seen him go into a different graded stakes, maybe a grade three or grade two before this. So can't go to rate grade one and, and choose him here. Wouldn't be surprised. Um, number 10, redistricting. Same thing, except this horse is super impressive. Um, has only raced once, and that was here at Belmont on the third. Um, got an 89 Brisnet in its 90K maiden, one by four, nearly five lengths. So super impressive. Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt, Clarevich Stables. You've heard that combo a million times. When you think of turf racing in America, and especially in New York, those are the three you want right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if this horse wins and kind of just like shows up out of nowhere. But as I mentioned multiple times, there's no way I'm taking a horse from a maid into a grade one. It doesn't matter if it's the Kentucky Derby, um, the Belmont Derby or whatever. They're facing winners and not just winners, created stakes winners for the first time ever. Um, and it's a deep, deep uh, pool to jump into. So for me, redistricting is going to be a fade this time. And the last horse here, number 11, the Foxes. This is one of the favorite Euros for this race. Um, coming over from Great Britain, um, ran at Epsom in the Bedford Derby. Um, ran in York, ran in Newmarket, really impressive uh, racing in group, group ones, group twos over there. I'm just, I'm going to stick with my American form for now. That could come to bite me in the butt, but I'm tossing all the euros this year. I don't know Andrew Balding too well, um, what his performance is like in America. Whereas Charles Appleby, I know when he brings a horse over here, good chance of winning. I haven't seen much from Andrew Balding from my historical watching, um, so maybe it's, he's just taking a shot. Maybe he really likes this position and he's sending the horse over. I would keep him here for the Turf Triple Crown Series in New York. Um, but for me, this race, it's going to be a toss. If he does well here, wins, definitely going to be looking forward to watching him at Saratoga later on this year. So for me, we're just including number four, Web Slinger, number eight, Kalik, going a little bit skinny in this race. Leg number four, race number 11, the grade three victory ride stakes, going six and a half furlongs on the dirt. This is where I'm putting my single for this race. And I only think this is a two horse race. So I'm only going to talk about the two that I like. And the first one I like is number five, Maple Leaf Mel. Um, this horse is fantastic, undefeated, um, absolutely dominated at Pimlico. Loved, loved watching her there. Uh, four races, 96 prison that last out, 98 two back. This is just lighting the course on fire. Um, she's the favorite here. I think it was eight to five or nine to five. Um, won two races back, 98 Brisbane at speed figure, one by seven lengths. Maple Leaf Mel is incredible. And she could be the easy, you know, sprint filly for the year. Um, but I think this is the race to beat her in. Similar to another horse, Munnings Gold, who was dominating her sprint division until she faced Greatest Stakes Company, until she faced other winners. So Maple Leaf Mel won a grade three, but she hasn't faced a grade one field yet. And that's why I'm going with the number eight red carpet ready as my top choice in this race. Um, won the grade two, eight bells, faced the grade two Devona Dale as a route, didn't really do well there. Won the grade three forward gal. Red carpet ready is undefeated in sprints. Um, and that's at Gulfstream, that's at Churchill. And the only time she she lost was in a route race going two turns. We're going uh going a mile at Gulfstream. It's a one-turn race there. So they're both really great, and you can't go wrong either way. Red Carpet Ready is going to be a little bit bigger, better price here, and I think her experience facing other graded stakes winners um, and other better better fields so far is why I'm choosing Red Carpet Ready over Maple Leaf Mel. Um, if you want to double up your ticket, you can't go wrong choosing both of them, but you're going to be losing some equity value there, so you need to take a stand, whether it's the value car play with Red Carpet Ready or the logical favorite in, in Maple Leaf Mel. I'm going to go with the value play here and try to get a little bit better price. Try to go against Maple Leaf Mel, who I feel like is going to be the winner of this division later on in the year. But this is the opportunity to beat her here. So that's where I'm going this race, singling red carpet ready, trying to fade Maple Leaf Mel. In the last race, leg number five, race 12, 40K maiden claiming for six furlongs on the turf. Um, this is a huge field. And I, I don't want to talk about all of them because really you could you could roll the dice on any of these horses here. Um, I chose to include four, and really I was looking at upside, um, choosing horses who haven't raced before, either first time starters or getting some kind of relief here. So I'll go with the number seven first, Anafrio, um, first time starter, Regina Giglio, um, Jacqueline Davis aboard, 
has never raced before at a majestic city or by a majestic city out of town of out of town bell which is spites town mayor um you know you don't know what you're going to get here and i know and i know all these other horses are bad so i'd rather take a shot at a, a first time starter in a race like this than a horse that i know is going to throw up a, four, a 45 buyer or brisbane that speed figure so I'm taking a shot with Anafrio, who should be a big price there. My first first one in. The next one is going to be the number nine horse, Sinaloa. Another first-time starter, but this one's by Good Magic out of a Ghost Snapper mare. That's excellent breeding. You're getting Linda Rice, Jose Ortiz. Great combo here. So you've got uh, good breeding. You've got one of the top jockeys. And Linda Rice, as I mentioned before, places her horses in places where she thinks they're going to perform well. So if she thinks this, this horse, who's a 25K purchase, um, from 50, 50k stud fee um, is going to be well placed here. Uh, I put my trust in her. Um, so again, upside here with good breeding, first time starter, number nine Sinaloa, uh, number eleven Geo's majestic majesticness. Um, same thing here, another majestic city, um, at, another one by majestic city, um, kind of an unknown. I don't I don't know Jesus Romero and Amon Castillo um, too well, but. Once again, I'm looking for those first-time starters where you don't know what you're going to get. Get a little bit of a dice roll here where, hey, maybe they, they show up with a big run. Uh, we don't have a lot of data points to suggest what's going to happen here, and you're going to get a good price. And then the number 12, Boston Mama, last one, another first-time starter, Javier Castellano, George Weaver. Um, breeding suggests they like the grass. There, see, and, and again, you could go all in this race, and there's no, I wouldn't talk you off any of these horses. Um, but since we're trying to keep this ticket skinny and we wanted to go a little bit deeper on some of the other legs, I'm only including four, four horses here to keep the ticket under $50. Um, so I'm going to take a shot with the four, four horses that I like that haven't raced yet. So those are the four I'm going with the number seven, Anafrio, the number nine, Sinaloa, number 11, Crips Majesticness, and number 12, Boston Strong Mama. So those are the four I'm going to include, going to toss everyone else and hope that we're just getting some kind of unknown performance here. So with that said, here's a final look at my ticket. Race number eight, we're going with the one, five, seven. Race number nine, we're going with the one, six, seven, eleven. Race number 10, four and eight. Race 11, singling the eight. Race number 12, seven, nine, 11, 12. Total cost for a 50 cent ticket is $48. Best of luck to everyone. Um, keep your eyes on the channel. We'll be covering a lot of the Belmont card and, and some of our other videos. We have a capping the card coming out. Um, follow us along on Twitter. My name's at Michael Peller, and you can follow me at Horse Guy Mike. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to Trust the Profits for more content as we come down the road. Saratoga is coming up quickly, so we're finishing off Belmont this week, and hopefully we'll be diving into Saratoga and Delmar once those cards come. All right, thank you, everyone. Good luck. Have a great rest of your day.